Hi everyone. In this lesson I want to look at equations that are said to be reducible to a quadratic. Now these are equations that really aren't quadratic equations, but if you sort of cock your head and squint your eyes they look like a quadratic equation. For example, this first one right here, it looks quadratic in the sense that it's a trinomial and there's a certain symmetry about it. And one way <clears throat> that works especially for problems like this is to just factor it. You could go ahead and factor this as x squared and x squared to get x to the fourth. And the factors of 27 that would give you 12 in the middle would be 9 and 3, and they would both have to be minus there. Okay, so notice that that does give you a negative 3x squared and a negative 9x squared is negative 12x squared plus 27. And <clears throat> then I could just set each of these factors equal to 0. x squared minus 9 equals 0 or x squared minus 3 equals 0. Now I could factor this one further as x plus 3x minus 3, or I could just bring the 9 over and extract the square roots. x would be plus or minus 3, and same thing here. Bring the 3 over and extract the square roots. So notice there's actually four answers to this, <clears throat> plus 3, minus 3, and plus square root of 3, and plus the minus square root of 3, or x equals negative square root of 3. All right, <clears throat> now another way you could do that same problem that is, illustrates the more general uh, principle of these equations that are reducible to a quadratic would be to make a substitution. To think of this uh, as x squared, the quantity squared, minus 12 times x squared, plus 27 equals 0. When you write it like that, you can see that this is an equation that's quadratic in x squared. That's the language we use to describe it. So that if I make the substitution u equals x squared, this is really quadratic, isn't it? It's u squared minus 12u plus 27 equals 0. So this really is a quadratic equation, but notice I'm not just solving for u. I'll solve this for u. I'll solve the quadratic equation, but ultimately I want to find x. So when I solve this, I'll do just like what I did up here. I'll factor this, and it does factor as u minus 9 and u minus 3. And so I get that u is equal to 9 for one of the solutions or u is equal to 3 for the other solution. But remember, I don't want u, I want, I want x. I'm looking for the x, so I have to come back and resubstitute. What was u again? Well, u was x squared, so I really have x squared equals 9, or x squared equals 3, and there I'm back to this point up here where I could just extract the square roots. x is plus or minus 3, or x is plus or minus the square root of 3, those four solutions. All right, let's do another one. Notice this one here, if I were to multiply all this out, I'd get x to the fourth and um, uh, some other terms in here, and it wouldn't be a quadratic equation. But notice that I have, you know, a, the quantity right here, you could think of this as like Bob. Bob squared minus 5 times Bob plus 6 equals 0. So I'm going to make a substitution right here. I'm going to let u be the x squared minus 1. So this really is quadratic. I'd say this equation is quadratic in x squared minus 1. This is like u squared minus 5u plus 6 equals 0. So I can factor that. That factors fairly easily as u minus 2 times u minus 3 equals 0. Uh, so I'm going to get u is equal to 2 or u is equal to 3 for the solutions to this equation, but remember I ultimately want the solutions to my original equation. So let's go ahead and resubstitute now. u was x squared minus 1, so I got x squared minus 1 is equal to 2, or x squared minus 1 is equal to 3, and then solve each of these separately. This would give me x squared equals 3, so x is plus or minus the square root of 3. This would give me x squared is 4, so x is plus or minus 2. Again, I get four solutions uh, for, these, uh, for this problem, like I did in the first one up here. All right, let's do one more <clears throat> like this. This one here looks very interesting because it has fractional exponents. But notice if I rewrite this this way, w to the 1 squared 
minus 2 times that same w to the 1 third minus 8 equals 0, then it kind of looks like a quadratic equation. In fact, we'd say this is quadratic in w to the 1 third. So I'm going to make a substitution here. Let's let u be w to the 1 third. So this is really quadratic in the sense of being u squared minus 2u minus 8 equals 0. Now I'm going to factor that. That factors as u minus 4 times u plus 2. So I get u is equal to 4 or u is equal to negative 2. Again, I don't want u, I want w, so let's go back up here and resubstitute. u was w to the 1 third, so w to the 1 third is equal to 4, or w to the 1 third is equal to a negative 2. Now how do I solve this? Well, remember that the 1 third power is the cube root. So to undo a cube root, I'm going to cube both sides. And notice if I cube this side, I'll end up multiplying the exponents, and that'll give me a third times 3, which is 1. I'll get w to the first power. So that's really what I want to do. So <clears throat> this is going to give me w equals 64. And over here, I'll get w equals negative 8. Negative 2 to the third power is negative 8. So those would be my solutions. Let's just double check. Let's see if these actually work, should we? Uh, let's check. This will be a nice review of our fractional exponents as well. So if I have uh, 64 to the 2 thirds power minus 2 times 64 to the 1 third power minus 8, the question is, will that really equal 0? Well, what does it mean to the 2 thirds power? Well, the denominator the, is the root, right? So I look, take the cube root of 64, which is 4, and then the numerator is the power. So I've got to square that 4, and that gives me 16. The cube root of 64 here is 4. And notice that, sure enough, 16 minus 8 is 8, and 8 minus 8 equals 0, and that checks. All right? We do the same thing with, uh, with negative 8. Let's, let's check that one as well. Um, draw a little line here if I got a little extra room. So I'd get negative 8 to the 2 thirds power minus 2 uh, times the negative 8 to the 1 third power minus 8. Does that equal 0? Well, again, the cube root of negative 8 would be negative 2. And then I have to square the negative 2, so that's actually a positive 4. And then the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. And notice that 4 plus 4 here is 8. And 8 minus 8 equals 0. So that one also checks.